As you can see from this slide, I'm giving you the outline. Basically, today I'm going to report what we have done in our group at the University of Houston in the past 20 years. For sheer research, we first try to find the constitutive models of the construction materials, including pre-stressed concrete. And then we try to implement the constitutive models into the final element analysis computer program using OpenSeas as a framework. And we also have done a lot of tests on PC beams from the test results and uh, from literature. We are able to propose a set of shear design equations. Therefore, today, I will present the experimental work first and then propose the set of shear design equations. Afterwards, I will present how we implement our constitutive models into the final element program. And uh, lastly, I will show you the validation using the full scale test result. Now, let me give you some background about the shear problem. As you can see from this slide, when we are talking about shear, the shear value is very possible to be a brittle mode. And also, we really don't have a rational model up to now for shear design, for shear prediction. This is the reason the shear design provision around the world very different. Just give you an example in the United States. We have two major codes, ACI code and the ASHTO code. But the shear design provisions by these two codes are very different, very different. And uh, as a matter of fact, they are empirical, complicated, and they have severe limitations. This is the problem we are facing. This is the reason in the past 20 years, everybody has been working on shear. As you can see from this slide, when we are talking about shear, basically we have two typical shear value modes. One we call web shear value, another one is so-called fracture shear value. As you can see from here, this web shear value very close to the support. And uh, the fracture shear value in the about one third spent. This slide shows the ACI code shear provisions. As you can see, the shear design by ACI code, they have two terms. One is so called shear resistance by concrete, we call it VC. And uh, the second term, is the shear resistance by steel. For VC term, ACI already consider the two value modes. For VCW, that is for the web shear value. And uh, for VCI, this is for the fracture shear, as you can see. It. This slide shows the ASHTO LRFD shear provisions. As you can see again, they also propose two terms. One is VC term, another one VS term. This VP is to consider the vertical component of the pre-stressing tendon. But in the ASHTO LRFD code, as you can see, two variables beta and the theta. These two variables has no physical meaning and uh, are given by graphs and tables. As you can see it now from ACI code and uh, the ASHTO code, they are very different. They are very different. The method or concept we adopted as so-called loops shear concept. We also consider two terms. One is the VC term, the second one is VS term. 
as you can see, the VSW resists basically by the vertical reinforcement. There is a shear reinforcement. And then the concrete contribution basically will count on the shear value plan resistant S and then consider the vertical component. Therefore, we have this term. <coughs> As the VC, this is our uh, main concept. In the past, as I mentioned to you, in the past 20 years, a lot of institutions have been working in this area. This, this research we call orthotropic models, including Europe, Japan, Australia, Canada, and the USA. Even in USA, Professor Sharon Wood also work on it at UD Austin, and Professor Philip from UC Berkeley also work on it. Professor Philip's group, including Professor Ayu, Professor Scopani, Professor Ayu now is in our department, and uh, Professor Speconi went back to Italy. But I would say in the past 20 years in our university, we did the most about shear research. As you can see, I'm going to present to you, we found all the constitutive models by using this very unique universal parent tester. This universal parent tester designed and built in-house by Dr. Xu about 20 years ago. As you can see, we can put a full-scale panel the size can be 50 by 50 inch square, and the thickness of this panel can go up to 16 inches. As you can see, on each side, you see the five blue color. Actually, there is five pairs of jacks. What you see is the front. At the back, we have another five jacks. Each jack, the capacity, as 100 tons is about 220 kips, actually. In the plant, totally, we have 40 jacks, uh, 40 jacks. In other words, on each edge, we can provide 1,000 tons of force, totally 4,000 tons. This is the reason we can break full-scale panel. And from this tester, in the past 20 years, we have been conducting tests on these panels for more than 200 panels already. From all the panels, we found the constitutive models, including reinforced concrete, pre-stressed concrete, and uh, recently steel fiber pre-stressed concrete. Now, after the introduction, now I want to report to you about the objectives. They are, number one, we want to perform experimental study on the structural behavior, especially the shear behavior of pre-stressed concrete girders, including the web shear value and the fracture shear value. Number two, we want to develop a simple yet rational shear design equation. And uh, we also want to develop a final element program to predict the shear behavior of pre-stressed concrete beams under monotonic or cyclic, re reverse cyclic loading for columns. Now, let me show you some experimental work. As you can see here, we have five beams, B1 to B5. This is the cross-section at the end zone for beams B1, B2, and B4. And this one is for B3 and B5. Remember, all those are type A beams in Texas Department of Transportation because this research project is sponsored by Techstart. Again, you can see from this slide. Here, we 
list all the important variables. Number one, the value mode. As you already heard a while ago, we do have web shear value in this region and fracture shear value in this region. And also, the shear span to effective depth ratio, A over D. This is a very important variable. The third one is the percentage of stirrups. That means the percentage of shear reinforcement. Lastly, we want to check the tendon effect, especially the tendon direction. We make it straight versus draped tendon. This is the five beams we designed. As you can see, all the five, including all the variables, the value mode and shear span, shear reinforcement, 0.17% is the minimum requirement and uh, go up to 1%. And pre-stressing tendon, we use all straight, 12 tendon all straight. And for these two beams, we have eight straight tendons and four draped tendons. And in our design, B1 to B3, web shear value, and uh, the other two, fracture shear value. This slide shows the test setup. As you can see, actually, in our lab, in addition to the vertical, uh, in addition to the universal panel test there, a while ago I mentioned, we do have a set of vertical loading system. As you can see here, all the four MTS dynamic actuators. We use all those actuators to perform our shear test. This is the type A text type A beam full scale. The height of this beam is 28 inches. This shows the instrumentation in the critical region. As you can see, we use the LVDT to measure the deformation. From the deformation, we can find the strength. We have LVDT, two LVDTs in horizontal direction, another two in vertical direction, and two more in the diagonal direction. Therefore, this instrumentation is a kind of rosette. After we get the uh, strength in all the three directions. Using more circle, we can get the strength in any direction we want. This shows the test result. As you can see, B1 up to B5. Straight tendon and the straight and the drag tendons. Those are the web shear value and the fracture shear value. This is the summary. But I want to show you further regarding the shear force versus diffraction curve, as you can see from this slide. These curves, the value more is web shear value. Therefore, the capacity is much higher when compared with fracture shear value. We have five beams, total of 10 ends. Therefore, we have 10 curves in this slide. From the test, our own test, and uh, from the literature, we find our research findings as the, the forum. The, what we found is shear strength is a function of shear span to effective depth ratio. That is A over D. And also, as a function of FC prime. Also, as a function of web area, BD, it's also function of percentage of shear reinforcement, low W. But I would like to make a note. From our research, we found shear strength is not a function of pre-stressing force. What we found, the effect is very small. That is negligible. And also, there is the value crack angle is not a function on the shear capacity. What we found, the value crack angle is about 45 degree. 
as later I will show you a slide. Now, let me propose our shear design equation. From our own test and uh, from literature, as you can see, we collected a lot of test data. The dark blue stands for the smaller specimen. The height of the cross section is less than 50 centimeter. The light blue is large specimen. The height is greater than 50 centimeter. This is our UH shear design equation. As you can see, the concrete contribution is this term and the steel contribution is term. This representing the A over D. A over D is the shear span to effective depth ratio. Now, let me explain this Vs. As you can see, the Vs means the shear resistance by the shear reinforcement. If we take an average, the average is spacing for stirrups. For in this case, the shear value plan is ha having an angle 45 degree huh, to the horizontal. This plan intercept three rebars in this case. But we call it this is the average spacing, okay? If we move this shear plan a little bit to the left, let become this case, become this case. As you can see, this plan intercepts only two rebars, only two rebars. This may happen. If this happens, actually this stands for the minimum shear resistance. This may happen. Therefore, in our Vs term, we would subtract it one. Here, we would subtract one because we because we consider minimum shear reinforcement when compared with average spacing case. This slide shows the crack development. As you can see, when the low is going to 92 kips, you can see some cracks. When we keep increasing the low to 96 kips, much more cracks happen and also extend longer. When it's filled at 100 kips, as you can see, the value plan is this one. That is a 45 degree angle to the horizontal, 45 degree angle. This is the reason we say the angle, the shear value plan, the angle is not a function. Actually, it's just a 45 degree. Now, let me show you the contribution of concrete. We see, based on all the test data we plot in this slide, vertical axis stands for the normalized VC. Horizontal axis stands for A over D. As you can see from the data, we propose this equation, this equation to describe this curve, to describe this curve. And uh, if A over D is much less, much smaller, we put a cap. We see cannot be more than 0 0.83 because if A over D is getting smaller in this region, we may have shear bound value or anchorage loosens or that kind of problem. This is the reason we don't want people to use much larger we see in this area. We put 0 0.83. From this slide, we propose the VC term to be this one and put a cap. This one actually has this, this curve, as you saw it right here. And the cap is here. The next one is VU. As you can see, the ultimate shear strength, we plot all the test data on this slide. Vertical axis 
is the VU horizontal axis, the A over D. Take a look. In this region, we found all those are brittle shear value in this region. But when the value is equal to 1.5, in this region, we found the value is a ductile mode, ductile mode. Therefore, we propose to use 1.33, which is a little bit less than 1.5, to ensure ductility when it failed. As you can see here, 1.33. And this slide shows the maximum ultimate strength we use versus FC prime, versus FC prime. This is the dot we obtained from literature. As you can see, the actual code proposed this line, which is not conservative because, see, we have some test data lower than the proposed line. And the ACI code proposed this curve. It seems to us it's very conservative. We propose this curve, as you can see. And also, we have an ongoing text up project. We try to extend our proposed shear design equation to high strength concrete. Can go high, as high as 100 and PA, somewhere here. There's 16 uh, KSI. As you can see from this slide, those two are already not conservative for ESTO, but he, last year we did some test, go to high strength concrete, go to 16 KSI, the dot somewhere here, the dot we already obtained the result, but the project not finished yet, we cannot publish. We have some dot right here. Therefore, we are very confident the shear design equation we proposed is very reliable. That also can be extended to high strength concrete up to 100 megapascal. This slide shows the minimum shear reinforcement requirement. As you can see, in the vertical axis, stand for the shear reinforcement ratio in the horizontal axis is A over D. ACI code used this coefficient 0 0.06 somewhere here. ACI code threw it out. ESTO increased this number a little bit larger to 0 0.08 somewhere here. But from the test, what we found, some brittle value still failed in this region between A over D equal to 2 to 4. This region, even though this value is greater than 0 0.06 or greater than 0 0.08, but we still have brittle value. Actually, in this region, some of the experts know already, we call it Carney's Valley. Professor Carney found this phenomenon in 1960s for reinforced concrete beams under shear. What we found, for pre-stressed concrete, we have the same phenomenon. A over D equal to 2, between 2 to 4. We still have Carnes value. Therefore, we propose the minimum shear reinforcement, okay, in this region, between 2 to 4, we need to double 0 0.06 to about 0 0.12 here to make sure if engineer follow our proposed equation for minimum reinforcement, the range for A over D from very small up to 2, 3, up to greater than 4 can be used if they follow these two equations. This is the entire set of our shear design method. As you can see, again, this is the VC concrete contribution. This is the VS steel contribution. And in addition, we have to set the minimum reinforcement and the maximum reinforcement. 
similar, the concept of similar like fracture design, we want to have an uh, under reinforced design. We want to make sure when the beam fed by shear, we still have ductility. This is the reason the design need to be in between minimum and maximum. And maximum. And this is the VC term, this is the VS term. Now let me show you the comparison among all the three methods. Here, as you can see, all the text points we plotted here. The vertical axis stands for the V experimental divided by V calculation. Our method, the lowest value is about 1, can go up to less than 3. And the ACI started from a little bit lower than 1. That is unconservative, actually, to a little bit more than 2. And HTO, very scattered from less than 1 to more than 4.5. But all those points, we include all the large size and the very small size beams. If we exclude the small size beams, just plot the beams result for the height greater than 50 centimeter, as you can see from this slide. The result for our method is between 1 to about 1.7, and ACI is a little less than 1 to about 2. Ashto still very scatter from less than 1 to about 4.7. From this slide, we are very confident our method is very reliable. Now, let me report the finite element analysis computer program. As you can see from this slide, we use OpenSys. Why OpenSys? Actually, we use OpenSys as our framework because OpenSys is an object-oriented software written by C++. And the key features of OpenSys include interchangeability and the ability to integrate existing libraries and new components into the framework without changing the existing code. In addition, OpenSys is open source software and uh, as a research tool. You can see the principal object in OpenSys from this slide. We do have domain object, model builder object, and uh, analysis object. As you can see from this model builder object, the main task is to construct the object in the model and add them to the domain. And the analysis part, actually in our research, we did not really touch. We only focus on model builder, as you can see from next slide. Model builder is here. As I mentioned to you a while ago, we found all the constitutive models. That is the material properties. We implement the constitutive models into Open seas, that means combine with the element together. There is quadrilateral element to build RCPC member element. Actually, you will see more later. Here, from this slide. From our universal panel test, uh, we obtain all the models for steel, concrete, and the tender, pre-stressing tender. All those combined together with the four-node quadrilateral element to build RCPC plan trace module and uh, to develop the RCPC plan trace element. This slide shows the analytical algorithm. This blue block is our main contribution. The other just like the convention of finite element analysis algorithm. 
Now, let me report our module one by one. Concrete module, as you can see, actually has this solid curves. From the concrete seed in the test, under compression, the strengthen curve looks like this one, this dirty curve. But if we are talking about shear, there is a 2D problem. Therefore, the concrete strength will be softened. All those softened behavior we found it from our panel test. This one has been implemented to the open seats as you saw it right here. We just have to put some values. And for the steel, as you can see, our model looks like this one. First, the bilinear from origin go up to year point. Please make a note. This year point, this year point for steel, this is steel is embedded in concrete. Therefore, the year point is a little bit, I would say about 15%, less than the year point of the bare bar, of the bare bar. Therefore, the model is from origin go to this year point and then by near going up. When we unload, the unloading procedure okay, in the opposite direction, we have to consider so-called Bauschinger effect. Bauschinger effect. We also implement this module into OpenSys. And one more is the pre-stressing tendon. As you can see, the tendon actually similar like the reinforcing bars. Now let me show you the validation. As you can see, this shows the final element mesh for a beam with web shear value, web shear value. Therefore, web shear value should be somewhere here. This is the support. This is the support. At the top flange and the bottom flange, we use bean column element. We use bean column element. And in the web, we use the element we developed. There is the quadrilateral element. And uh, this slide shows the final element mesh of the fracture shear specimen. Now this is fracture shear. The previous one is web shear. This is a fracture shear. As you can see, they are similar, but the failure mode is different. This shows the incremental result and the analytical outcomes for the comparison. As you can see, both results are very close from the beginning to the failure, to the failure. Now, next one, I want to show you a validation by using post-tension bridge column. As you can see from this slide, this post-tension bridge column is a hollow one. The high is 5.7 meter, 5.7 meter. Inside this column, we have four tendons. We have four tendons. This column has been subjected to reverse cyclic loading, to similar seismic load. Totally, we have three specimens, as you can see right here. This is our finite element modeling. As you can see, the loading direction is here, push, pull, push, pull, to similar seismic load. And this region, we use bean column element, and this region, we use membrane element. And inside the pre-stressing tendon, total four, we have four tendons right here. One, two, three, four, those three are missing. So the tendon will also use bean column element. This shows the result. For comparison, as you can see, incremental result and analytical outcomes are very close. 
Now let me make conclusions from what I just reported. Number one, a simple and accurate shear design method for PC beams has been proposed which incorporates shear span to effective depth ratio as a primary parameter. And uh, that can be easily included in design software. The shear strength of a PC beam is neither a function of the amount of pre-stressing force nor the angle of failure plan. And uh, the proposed shear design method provides a higher VC and a lower VS. What we mean is when compared with ACI code and the ESTO code, we found our VC is higher and the VS is a little bit lower. But as I show you from all the tests done, we are pretty confident our method is very reliable and rational because we have our theoretical basis. As you can see from this conclusion, the constitutive models of PC implemented into a final element program using OpenSeas is capable of predicting the behavior of beam under monotonic load and the columns under reverse cyclic loading. And also an accurate constitutive model and an appropriate final element method are very crucial for accurate prediction of shear behavior of PC beams and the columns. For future study, as you can see from this slide, number one, we propose more PC beams with higher strength should be tested to confirm the unsafe maximum ultimate shear provision of the HDO LRFD specs. As I mentioned to you a while ago, actually, this is an ongoing project sponsored by Techstart. And also, the shear bound value of PC beams are possible. Therefore, they should be studied and guidelines to prevent this type of failure. We should study this one. This is the task we are working on now also sponsored by Techstart. And uh, we found the effect of steel fibers on shear capacity of PC beams actually could be studied through PC beams reinforced with steel fibers. Because from our previous research we found steel fiber concrete is very good to resist the shear. Finally, we proposed Three-dimensional PC model need to be developed and implemented into computer program for analysis of PC structures under combined loading. Finally, I would like to make an announcement. As you can see, a series of projects we have been working sponsored by Techstart and also the PC beams were cast at Texas Concrete Company in Victoria, Texas. The final end program developed as part of our research is based on the open seas. And uh, many important suggestions were received from Dr. Makina and Dr. Mazzoni to implement the constitutive models of PC into open seas. Lastly, for the PC columns comparison, we would acknowledge Dr. O as Sunni Buffer for his generous input to provide all the test data. Thank you very much for your attention.
Hey, Jay, are you there? Jay. Okay. Okay, so from the participants, any comments and uh, questions are very welcome. Okay, I saw so many questions. Maybe I can answer one by one or so many questions. Let's see. Can you 